Hello and welcome to our May virtual opening here at the Portland Art Gallery. We are so delighted that you're able to join us from near and afar um, and celebrate this exciting group of artists. Uh, uh, my name is Emma Wilson. I'm the director of the Portland Art Gallery and uh, it's just good to be here. So a few thank yous. Thank you to our clients who continue to stay engaged and, and stay connected with us. And thank you to our amazing group of artists. This month's feature artists are Jody Edwards, Julia Blake, Andrew Faulkner, and Anne Trainer domang You're gonna hear um, from each of them in a few moments. So it's May in Maine. It means we can probably safely put away the shovels and the salt and the other things because my rhododendron bush is all blooming and it's an exciting time of rejuvenation. Um, and we are we are just we are just excited here. <laughs> um, but also there's a lot of hard things going on around the world and there's a lot of things that's that's causing a lot of emotion. And so I have just been hearing from a lot of people um, both in the gallery and outside the gallery how important art has been to be able to kind of spend time with it and regenerate and sort of refuel and engage with it. So I just really want to encourage you to stay connected with us around the arts and to, to take that moment that you need to sort of refocus and, and regenerate and enjoy the great outdoors, whether it be in here in, here in Maine or, or somewhere closer to home. So um, uh, now I'd like to switch it over to uh, hear our remarks from our artists that are featured this month. And I'll start with Jody. Hi, Jody. <laughs> and so, hi, hi. so hi. I'm great. So I um, read the little snippet that was for your Radio Main transcript, the intro to it. And it just was so perfect that I'm going to quote a bit from that in your introduction, if that's all right. So in a field of computer science, abstraction refers to the process of taking away or removing less relevant characteristics in order to get to what is most essential. Using that definition, Jody's life, like her art, has been a process of abstraction leading to a current existence on a family farm in Surrey, Maine, a beautiful family farm in Surrey, Maine. Jody traces her journey from an education at the Parsons School of Design in New York City, and then this trajectory of varied experiences, including waitressing, singing, still wanna hear you sing, teaching, and uh, posing as an art model. Your energy and your courage and willingness to engage and take risks shine through your colorful, beautiful, colorful pieces, creating a manifestation of abstraction that is entirely your own. I just thought that was so perfectly put. Um, so please join me in welcoming artist Jody Edwards. Thanks, Emma. Yeah, that that's that's great. That sums it up really nicely. And um, I, I also wanted to start off by saying that um, I'm so proud to be in this gallery and I'm going into my eighth year of being with Portland Art Gallery, which I'm really, really proud of. And um, I'm proud of the gallery too, how it's it's grown and it just keeps getting better and better. And um, I'm more and more, you know, grateful and proud to be a part of it. Um, so <clears throat> I, yes, Emma mentioned, well, abstraction is is my thing really i i can't seem to get away from it i try sometimes and um actually last summer i did get a little bit um representational but it still was abstract but it, it seemed to work um this group of paintings and i well let me just say that i <clears throat> color is really what motivates me and i i often paint to the to the seasons of the year or, you know, like right now we're in spring. And so the show that I have up um, right now is uh, my spring colors. And uh, I think Kevin's going to post a picture of the, 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 the paintings that I have up there. I, I sent him uh, some files of those. Um, and so, yes, I, I like to paint with um, for the seasons and um, for the time of year. And also... Emma mentioned the, you know, the tumultuous time that we're in. And so I have this favorite word that I like to use when I talk about my work and it's juxtaposition. And I, if, if you, if, when Kevin shows the, the three paintings that are up, I, I, you know, there's a lot of, how do I say it? Yeah. Turmoil. And so I like to show something 
calm, you know, I have a, a painting that's calm next to the painting that's got more turmoil in it. And, and I try to, and the shapes that I use sometimes try to make sense out of the, out of the turmoil of, of, in the world that we're in. And, um, but I, in this group of paintings, I really was pushing myself to do something just a, a little different. I was talking to Willa Venema this morning on the phone briefly, and she was saying, you really have challenged yourself, Jody, to, to push yourself, you know, with the, this group of paintings. And, um, so yeah, the, the, the five foot by five foot painting entitled Tenacity, which is my middle name, by the way. <laughs> um, somebody once referred to me, one of my coworkers referred to me as a bulldog with manners. I'm polite and gracious, but I go after what I want. And um, this particular painting, and I'll, I'll end it with this, is just, it, it, I, I spent 28 hours on this painting Tenacity, which is five feet by five feet. And it, I, you know, I think I, it, um, it, it's daunting to do a painting that size, um, a little bit. And at one point I, I scratched it and just said it was horrible. And then I was able to relax and let go. And, um, I even pulled an old painting out of storage that I thought, oh, this will probably work with my other two paintings. And then once I really had just let go of it, it, it kind of, it came back together, but I, would bring it down, my husband and I would carry it down every night after I'd work on it and put it in the living room because I often, I need to look at my work the next day and really kind of study it and see. This painting was such a study of what Emma was saying in the quote, what needs to be taken away and put back. I erase things constantly, put them back, add more, scratch it, put paint over it, take it away. And it, it just somehow, I don't know how it works, but uh, music is, is also a huge uh, part of my work. So um, that's part of how it works. But I don't know exactly how it works. It's something that comes, you know, through you, through me. But I, and I was saying to my friends and family members, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this five foot painting. I'm nervous about it. And um, I don't usually paint that size. I'd love to paint that size, but it's not my usual size. And they all said, Jody, you always pull it off. You always do. And somehow it, it comes together and I, I just know intuitively that it, it looks good. And I'm going to talk about it in the, in the live opening on Thursday. And I'm going to show the I've taken pictures of the process of how it's evolved, how it evolved, because how it started out was just absolutely nothing like what it looks like now. And so, um, it, I thought it might be interesting to just talk about that, that process of, of how it eventually does just come to be somehow you just know that it, that it's working and it, for so long it wasn't working. So anyway, that's probably way too much information about that painting, but, um, I'm really happy to be here and grateful to be part of the gallery and I'll turn it over to Emma. Thank you, Jody. And we are so grateful and proud. You talked about use those terms in the beginning and of you as well. And so appreciative of, of working with you as, as a represented artist. So keep on working, keep on layering, keep on figuring it out. And, and uh, we'll just keep on going. <laughs> All right. All right. And now I'd like to introduce artist Julia Blake. Hello, Julia. <laughs> All Julia's Julia's all the way from Salt Lake City, Utah. So uh, moved last year. There's an amazing amount of logistical pieces to get this fabulous body of work on view with with um, that we have here. Um, Julia, a little bit about you. Privately trained at the MFA in Boston and RISD. Uh, your art is in private collections all around the country and including Hawaii, apparently. Um, you have many styles, and in this show, you have many styles, you know, from the ab more abstract work to the, to the more figurative pieces. Oftentimes, we just hear about your vivid colors, high contrast, bold strokes, just a lot of really beautiful bold strokes, and that, you know, that you create this aesthetic um, and uh, that are symbolic for these works. You were the co-founder of the Artist Common, I guess, in, uh, in an old New England church, I understand, um, a place for artists to come together and to, 
to of all levels, right? Artists of all levels to come together. Do you still have your cabin in Sebago? In Maine? <laughs> okay. Okay. So they didn't. All right. Perfect. Well, yeah. Well, and that's wonderful and wonderful to have that connection. So please join me in welcoming artist Julia Blake. All right. So as Emma mentioned, I did just move across the country after uh, decades in New England. And um, I suppose it perhaps um, that it was the midlife reflection that I've been experiencing maybe contributed to um, the move. But my, my work since I got here has reflected change, but also growth. Um, I have a lot of perennials in the, in the body of work that, um, that I always do, but especially for this show. And I love what perennials say about tenacity and overcome adverse, overcoming adversity. Um, I think a lot about growth. I'm always talking to my kids about growth mindset and that um, you only fail if you give up. And um, that's a really important concept in my work um, because I'm constantly trying to remind myself to um, pick myself up when things don't go the way I had planned and the way I expected. Um, so this, um, this body of work is about that. It's about... Um, opposition you know there are going to be always things in your life that um that are op opposing each other and we have to decide what we're going to look at what we're going to focus on and um and what we want to be born and what we want to be reborn um so there's a lot going on in the world right now that that um is hard to think about and deal with and um, I think about nature and how nature overcomes adversity, and that is important for all of us. Um, and what can we do to make this world a little bit better? Um, we each have a little bit of power, a little bit of influence, and what can we do with that to um, lift others and to, to help others see their own potential and their own growth? And I think, you know, humans, we have this infinite capacity for growth. And... Um, I also want to echo what Jody said, how thankful I am to work with this gallery. Portland Art Gallery has been wonderful to work with, and they have overcome adversity. You know, hitting the pandemic hitting was, um, was extremely difficult for so many people and in so many fields. And, and I look at how the gallery has come out stronger through this. They've adopted new tech, new practices, new, um, new routines that have um, really really shown their ability to adapt and um i think you know really that's that's why i love working with this gallery i love the group of artists that that i've met through um through the gallery and being there and i'm excited to come back and be in person for the opening bringing a bunch of my friends from boston and um you know, one of the things that that has happened in the last few years is that I've really enjoyed painting on large scale um, rather than small works. Um, it just it feels it feels more immersive to me. And some of the pieces for this show are five feet, um, five feet in one dimension, a lot of four by fours. And I, I love how um, I feel so much more connected to the art that way, and I love how it's more of a gross motor skill than a fine motor skill, and I can feel like it involves my whole mind and body when I do that, and I hope that when people stand in front of the pieces, they can feel immersed and feel um, hopeful and feel some joy, because no matter what's going on in the world, we can find things to be happy about, we can find things that are going well, and, um, and we can focus on the things that we want to focus on. And um, I hope you love the show. That's, uh, that's really beautifully said, Julia. And I think that, that sort of that light and the joy and the capacity for growth are just all um, themes that come through your work and through all the work in this show, actually, this month. So um, really appreciate 
your comments. And I also like referring to it as a midlife reflection. I'm older than you, but I'd rather, I'd rather think about those things. This is not a crisis. This is a moment of reflection. And so, and then you're intentionally making decisions, right? Exactly. You're intentionally making decisions as opposed to reacting only to them. So, um, so thank you uh, for, for your remarks. Thank you, Julia. And now I'd like to introduce artist Andrew Faulkner. Um, reading over Andrew's, um, hi, Andrew, <laughs> all the way out from California, but he's going to be coming east uh, this week for the opening. So I encourage people to, to join us so that you can meet him in person. I love this description. Structural sensibilities of an architect father with a riotous color sense of his interior designer mother. I just think that's described so perfectly your work. Um, studying painting, Studied painting at Trinity College. Uh, influenced and taught by art colorist George Chapman, where, um, as you describe, you learn the art of defining space with color and value. Uh, full graphic design field that you had, and then just two years ago, full-time painter. Made the big switch, and we're so glad that you did, and it's been such a privilege and a joy to work with you. Um, you, you use the term, many of your landscapes are called invented color spaces, where color is used to break up the composition and achieve, achieve a sense of depth and atmosphere that can open up the interpretation to the viewer, which is so spot on in terms of what we hear um, when people are reflecting and, and engaging with your work in the gallery. So please join me in welcoming artist Andrew Faulkner. Thank you very much. It's great to be here and I look forward to being there in person uh, in a couple days. So uh, thank you for having me. Um, I, uh, I think that it's nice that those uh, descriptions resonate with you because you never know when you're describing yourself if, if other people are uh, taking it in the way you're thinking of it. But uh, I do use the term invented color space. I haven't copywritten that term, but I, I think I may have made it up. But, uh, <laughs> but um, I, it, it is a good description because uh, I get a lot of people asking, where is that? Why is that? You know, is that a turquoise river or so something like that? And um, a lot of uh, my art originates from an uh, iPhone photo. I like to say a, cr a crummy iPhone photo, the, the worst photo, the better, because then I don't look at the photo too carefully. And a lot of the imagination happens in my studio. Um, and uh, so I think that may, you know, you probably have, have more of my landscapes than, than anything else. And in, in this show, actually, uh, Kevin asked if I would consider doing a series of, of Portland inspired landscapes. And that's, the first time I've ever taken on kind of a thematic series for a specific place, especially, you know, for a place that where I'm not living because a lot of mine are inspired by uh, California landscapes. But I, I like to feel like um, for this series that I did for your show, that I added a little bit of a, a California take or twist on the on the color and the look and feel of the of the landscapes I did for the show. Um, Absolutely, that definitely comes through. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think that um, you know, as far as uh, uh, you know, I get I have to say I get asked a lot why Portland. You know, what? Why are you working with a gallery in Portland? And I think that's an interesting question. And and there's a funny story attached in that my my sister lives in Portland, and uh, I've been to your gallery several times and always written in your guest book please follow me on Instagram <laughs> um, I've been a fan of your gallery for a while and but you know it's sometimes uh, it's good to put out in the universe what you want because at some point somebody there at your gallery started following me on Instagram and I think for a while before you even contacted me and um, and it's been nice to have that East Coast connection because, of course, I'm I, uh, from Washington, D.C., but lived in New England for 14 years before I moved out here. And um, so I have a lot of attachment to New England, M Maine, Vermont, that area. So it's nice to keep that connection with your gallery. Well, um, we did you have any? Uh, and definitely enjoyed 
Did you have any specific questions for me? Because I could just go on and on. <laughs> um, I, 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 <laughs> you don't. You don't. I'm, you don't want me to use up all all of your time. Is uh, you know, I, I'm a big fan of Anne's work too. But um, but uh, I back to your initial uh, description um, of my parents. Um, I do think that also is kind of a key to understanding my work and. Um, Behind me, you can sort of see two examples from that first descriptive phrase of architecture and, and kind of riotous color. So um, back here is, is a, a kind of architectural abstract landscape, cityscape of San Francisco area, um, which also has a little bit of riotous color, but it's really playing with perspective. And, and even with my, my landscapes, you'll notice that there's there's sort of a forced perspective to draw, draw the, the viewer's eye in. Um, but color is probably the number one word that comes up when I have open studios or gallery opening. People identify my work with my use of color, which is, uh, you know, as you said, but I was uh, taught uh, by uh, George Chapman, who, uh, was an uh, amazing colorist and also a student of Joseph Albers, the great Bauhaus colorist. And he really uh, hit it home that achieving space through color, at least for him, was where it was at. And at the point where I was, uh, have a degree in painting from Trinity College, but as I was a student there, I was relying more on my drawing skills rather than my use of color to achieve space. So that, you know, even it's interesting how teachers uh, th those kind of le lessons and disciplines stick with you because it became kind of a, a lifelong goal to really pursue color. Um, and it, that just during the four years I was in school, I didn't feel like I had really gotten there. So, and I'm, and I'm still doing it. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is all fascinating. And I, um, I appreciate that you continue to um, continue to focus on staying in touch and following the, the gallery. And I know a number of our artists also were following you on social media, and we're very excited to learn of your joining the joining the gallery. So it's a, it's been a wonderful community. Um, it's been wonderful to have you join within the community. Well, yeah, and how great for me too, because your your artists have all kind of embraced me as one of the outsiders. I know you have other artists who are from far away, but I definitely feel part, part of the Portland uh, Art Gallery family, which is really nice. It's not always the case. And um, boy, what a great uh, selection of artists you have. And, and a lot of them are, are very into color. So that, you know, that, that vibrant color kind of comes through with uh, many of your artists, which is fun. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for those remarks. And yeah, we're very grateful and very proud of our, of our, of our artists and, and very appreciative of their, of their sharing of their talent. So, well, thank you, Andrew. Um, and now I'd like to introduce May's feature artist and trainer Domang. So great to have her here. This discussion around color trans, you know, translates so perfectly or is such a good segue for you who, where your, your work is so rich in imagery and color and the, the surface variety and the building up of the layers and the different mediums. And there's just this sense of hopefulness and joy that people experience when they're engaging with your work, whether or not it's a narrative um, about uh, what might be a conversation that might be happening or a reunion that might be happening with a couple or just a sort of a more uh, serene, beautiful landscape or, um, and some abstract pieces in this body of work as well. So a bit about Anne, Rhode Island College with a BA in studio, um, studio painting, right? And had a full long career in graphic design um, and also actually not just graphic design, but illustration, teaching and painting. And as a Copley Fellow and was awarded a fellowship in the Historic Fine Arts Work Center in, in Provincetown through the Copley Society of Art in Boston. She's a signature member of the New England Watercolor Society and has been selected for the bien, uh, for biennials in, at the Courier um, in Manchester, New Hampshire. So she, her, her works are um, in many private and, and uh, uh, commercial collections around the country. Uh, we are always 
greet when when there's new work that's come that's arrived by Anne, people get very excited. <laughs> so um, she's been just a joy to work with for the last for many years, probably about seven years. So please join me in welcoming artist and trainer Domain. Well, thank you for that really wonderful introduction and to go behind Andrew and stuff. This is this is really um, a good opportunity for me. Um, I have always loved color. I think um, that was something that first attracted me, I think, uh, as far as my art goes. And actually, it was playing with watercolor really early on in my life um, it was just kind of a fascinating medium. And then as I developed my art and realized, yeah, I think I'm gonna be an artist. Uh, things evolved and I wound up um, after college finding work in the graphic design field. So, uh, and there is where I learned a lot more about the use of color, but it really was more about overall design and then graphic design and the fact that I could make a career out of that and also be artistic through what I did. I didn't have an intention of becoming a painter. Um, I didn't have a lot of experience either visiting galleries or museums. It, that just was not part of my childhood. As I have mentioned in the past, I was one of nine kids and uh, just a big family of lots of things going on. And um, experiencing galleries from an art point of view wasn't what happened. We were more a natural history kind of uh, family and and just loving the outdoors and that's how we spent our time so um, but over time I did develop um, let's see in college I did a lot of life drawing a lot of from life drawing whether it was figures or landscape work that kind of thing so drawing was a basis for everything as far as the Rhode Island College program um, went and that applied then to sculpture and and lots of other um, mediums that I could get my hands on. So I tried a little of everything, including ceramics and sculpture. And, and then I finally settled into painting uh, really as a sideline art interest um, that I could do alongside my full-time work and growing a family and that kind of thing. So, um, and then eventually I just, uh, lots of life things happened and I, and I had an opportunity to jump in in 20, the beginning of 2013 to be a full-time painter and just dedicate all my time to seeing if I could make a go of this. And then a couple of years later, discovering Portland Art Gallery, and I had worked with some other, excuse me, smaller galleries before that, and just developing my work and what it was going to look like, because uh, I came out of a world more of from the illustration point of view. So I, I always kind of felt like I was illustrating something. So this has been a bit of a bar for me to get over and through that I, this year, I started to do work without an intention in mind. And that is like, for me, that is like a free fall right off a cliff, hoping there's something soft at the bottom. <laughs> and I should have had more confidence in this, but it, life does things and I just didn't. So, um, so anyway, this year I challenged myself to um, bring more of a refreshed feel to my work from what I had been doing. So I bring a lot of elements forward, this little building, this shape of a fish house, which started with an inspirational location on Monhegan Island. And I've kept these little fish houses. You could see a little beginning of another painting behind me um, that I still bring this little living space forward and a sense of design in that piece in the back was one of these pieces this year where I began with abstraction, which is completely not at all what I would normally have done. And I just played with the surface. I put marks on it. I, I posted like, hey, this is the first look at this piece is what I'm working. I just worked on it today. They're like, stop. I'm like, I can't. I just, I just don't know when to stop because I have never painted this way before so I kept posting like iterations and they're like you can stop now you can stop I'm like okay this is a learning thing for me and I know I have to just blast through so that's what I did um, and uh, but playing with this more intuitive feel resulted in some really different um, uses of texture and line and color um, in some of these pieces and then of course the the issues surrounding Ukraine and stuff were kept 
coming into my brain as I was working. So I, I gave them a nod in, in one piece called, um, let's see, it is, I can't, oh, Patchwork Life. And that one started with just sort of a chaotic laying on of color and paint and strokes and all of that. And then when I needed to, I felt like I needed to pull some of that together into shapes. I leaned back on my little houses and home buildings and then just put a nod in there of Ukraine flag colors and sunflower symbol and just the chaos within the shapes and some things getting settled out. And then finally toward the, the lower right area, there's a break of day and the sun is shining and that kind of thing. So those kind of things that happen in the world, I do sometimes integrate in my work, sometimes intentionally, sometimes it's accidentally and I don't realize it until later on and I look at it and go, oh, I know where that idea came from. So um, this body of work I had labeled um, in the Changing Light series. So there are several layers of changes for me that you know, if I didn't say it out loud, no one would realize it, um, but happening throughout this body of work that I started at the beginning of this year. So I can't wait to see it all up in, in one space because I have a very small studio, so I can only put one large piece on a wall at a time and then take it down and work on another. So it's, it's, not, uh, it's not simple, but um, even I'm looking forward to just seeing which pieces you all selected to put on the walls and then see how it plays with the other pieces in the show and stuff. So I'm looking forward to Thursday too and Andrew to meet you too in, in person because I've admired your work and, and whatnot too. So <laughs> hopefully that happens and we have a really great night on Thursday. So looking forward to it. Yeah, we are as well. And it does look fantastic. And there were, I wasn't able to fit all of the bodies of work, but it was classic because there was one piece that I hadn't hung up yet, but then a client came in and was interested and put it on hold. I'm like, all right, maybe that was, so we'll, we'll see. Hopefully it'll, who knows, right? I just roll with it. But, but anyway, the whole show, you know, Jody and Julia and Andrew and, and your work all just um, flows and works so beautifully together. And we're really excited, excited excited for the for the opening and for the month ahead. So thank you. So and thank all of you for joining us uh, for our virtual our May virtual opening. A few reminders, uh, please check out our podcast radio main podcast with Dr. Lisa Belisle. We send out an email each week, but you can also find those on our website. Uh, follow us on Instagram, as Andrew was mentioning, we're pretty active there. And then also stop in and see us seven days a week, 10 to 530 at 154 Middle Street, right in the heart of the old port. We have a great team of folks that will be happy to, to greet you and to spend time with you and engage um, in looking at the work of Savart. So uh, until we meet again, be well, stay curious, and keep in touch. Thank you. <laughs>